Thanksgiving is the day to be thankful, but every day should be Thanksgiving, really, yeah? But really, this holiday comes from a native holiday, seriously. The tribes on the East Coast, they a lot of them were agricultural tribes, and these guys they would have at least i think some tribes would have like three harvests a year, three of them one two three, one you knew Pyamini. like I said, it was at least at least three times a year, some maybe a little bit less, maybe others a little bit more. It all depends on what they're growing. When they harvested, they would have ceremonies. Yeah, they would get the best looking uh, of their crops, and then give it back to the earth. They put it in the earth, and they say they thank the earth, they thank the wind, the air, they thank the uh, water, and they thank the sun, so that this food would grow, so that the people would live. And then other animals eat these things too, yeah? So then we could eat the animals. <laughs> so they were not vegans, okay? <laughs> Try to remember that. They they ate meat too, but see, this is something they give thanks for because without that, hamburgers wouldn't taste too good. <laughs> just think about that. If there's ever a meat shortage and we're just... Start looking at the vegetarians, yeah? We'll round up the vegetarians because they're all full of grass and such and that'll be our next T-bone steaks. Because <laughs> they're, all, they're all full of vegetables like cows, yeah? So they're, they're the next, they're the cows of the future. All you vegetarians, look out. <laughs> We're coming after you. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> uh, shoot, I love it. <laughs> Anywho, um, that's another good show topic: the madness of vegetarianism and veganism. Yeah, seriously. Anyway, so then they give thanks, and they, they have ceremonies regarding this. It's a very ceremonial thing because it's special. Think about that. And I think those of you who grow your own crops. You know that, yeah? Even if you're just growing tomatoes on your balcony, you know, whatever, you know that it's it's spectacular what happens. Regardless of your belief system, it's spectacular when a potato's ready or a tomato or a corn or a squash or, you know, whatever you're growing. it's it's And it smells good, too, doesn't it? I remember those days when we used to have a garden when I was a little kid. They had the garden outside of town on family-owned land. And um, people respected one another back then. Yeah, yeah. People respected each other's property. And plus, our garden was way out in the middle of nowhere, so nobody knew about it anyway. There would be times where we'd go out there and pick pick stuff we need you know, for the week. Corn and lettuce and potatoes and tomatoes and squash and watermelon jeez that smells good yeah freshly picked and ripe vegetables well I guess watermelon is a fruit but nevertheless is it a fruit or a vegetable I don't know I don't care it tastes good (laughs) but it really smells good yeah that fresh stuff the fresh stuff and you wipe off the dirt and clean it and Jeez, that smells good stuff, yeah. Mm, good, good, good time. I'm really glad I experienced that. It's something, yeah. The, the only other time I ever experienced that was in Stockholm, Sweden. See, Stockholm is a city by the, you know, by the, there's a sea there. It's a port city. So their stuff is going to be really fresh. So I used to have a, a girlfriend there. This was back in 1996, and we went to the grocery store to get some some food, and we walked through the vegetable stuff, and I was like, oh, I went back in time. I went back in time to when I was six years old in the garden, and it's just, mmm, that smelled good, fresh vegetables, very fresh. Gee, that's nice. 
And then also, when I was a kid, there used to be farmers who would sell their produce on the side of the road, on right outside of town. So we used to pop, stop in there and buy things too. It's really, I really prefer that, you know, the real fresh stuff. Today's stores, just not like that. So, if you have never eaten anything like that, boy, you're missing out on something, yeah? You really, really are. So that something, yeah, that's really special. And that's the harvesting, you know, that they have, they, they do that. And, and the, the Indian tribes, they do things differently. But basically, they give thanks to the same entities. And they feast. They have a big feast and they celebrate and dancing and singing and and it's a wonderful time because it's a time to be thankful for everything that everything on the earth as long as you you do the work and you responsible for your life and take care of yourself everything works nice and even when difficulty comes you're able to find a solution because you express the emotion first in a constructive way, then you bring in your mind, and then you start thinking, how can I make the best of this? And you learn, you gain wisdom, and you come to peace with it. The emotions leave. You develop emotion. So even through difficulties, there's beauty in the end when you do your part, okay? So it's a wonderful thing. Wonderful. Wunderbar. (laughs) And so this is what Indians were doing for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Then the pilgrims came over and they really kept to themselves. Of course, they're scared. They set up where nobody's living. They set up their log cabins and such and they they tried to grow their crops that they grew when they lived in Europe. And the Indians noticed it, and they're like, huh, gee, they're living on land that's not even good for farming? And the other thing is, those kind of things can't grow here. So they kind of kept the eye on them, and they saw that their crops died. The pilgrims' crops died and the Indians and some of the nearby tribes were having their uh, one of their harvest festivals, their Thanksgiving. And so they decided to take some of their food to these pilgrims in peace and so they could eat. And they showed them how to prepare it. And then they began to make friends. And then they showed them, hey, this is what you grow. This is what grows here. They tried to get this message across because you're looking at different languages. And I always wondered how they made communication. Who learned whose language? And I bet you anything, there was a crap load of misunderstandings because let me tell you something. When I first started learning Germany, Germany, (laughs) when I first started learning German, sometimes I would hear a sentence or see something and I know some of the words and so I get an idea of what the sentence could mean and it turns out that I actually was talking about the opposite of it because there was one word that I didn't pay too much attention to. So I always wonder back then when the pilgrims and Indians were learning each other's language I always wonder if there were times when mistakes like that were made and that could have led to some of the confusion that's going to come next. So anyway, in the beginning it was a nice thing because winter's coming and they were facing starvation. Yeah? And the Indians took pity on them because there were little kids there. A kid is a kid. So that's why they fed them and they helped them plant the seeds and stuff like that so that the next harvest, the Indians helped the pilgrims to harvest it so they would learn how. And then the pilgrims share in their harvest because they were living together. 
You have to remember, people, that these pilgrims that came over, these were not politicians. These were people that were persecuted in their own country because their religion, they were different. And so they faced persecution on all sides. So that this was an opportunity for them to come. So even though they had different belief systems, they both believed in there's something greater than what we are. And that because of that, that's how the universe was created. And that because we can become one with nature, we learn what can grow and what to eat and which ones not to eat and you know things like that so because of the all these things there's lots of things to be thankful for so there was some common ground between the two peoples and so they had this understanding they're both spiritual peoples it's not a perfect world okay i'm not saying Pilgrims and Indians were walking around arm in arms. Hey, buddy, you're my buddy. You know, there, it's not that it was like that. They found a way to get along with each other. Okay, and I'm sure there were conflicts too, because it's not perfect. Yeah, I'm I'm sure there were conflicts, but they found ways to get by. So. A few years later, now here come the British. Their colonists are coming over to set up camp. And see, what was happening was that England was running out of land, it's getting overpopulated, and it's really a horrible time in England. Yeah, the uh, p- people were just throwing their kids in the streets and letting them fend for themselves. Basically, I'm not joking, because see, in the in these Catholic and Anglican churches, it's you know, the more kids you have, the better your chances of getting into heaven. That's basically one of their beliefs. I'm not joking, okay? A lot of Christian religions are like that because there's a verse in the Bible where it says something like, Blessed is he who hath many arrows in his sheath. And they take that to mean that the arrows are the children. That the more children you produce, the more God looks with favor on you. So this is why Catholics and other Christians have a crap load of kids. And sometimes they would do this, but then they couldn't feed them all. So they just throw them in the street. (laughs) Just dispose of their children. The children had to live on the streets like gangs. Yeah, like what you see in South America. That's what was going on in England. It's really rugged. Yeah. So then some of these wealthy people in England, after they heard about the Dutch, they decided to set up camp there too, but they were businessmen about it. Yeah. So they were like, Okay, this is a way for British people to sell themselves as slaves for five years these rich British bankers would send them over to North America, to these colonies, and they would have to farm the land, and everything goes back to the bankers. So they don't get anything. But in five years, they earn their freedom. So they're called indentured servants. So they started coming over like that. And these kind of people were usually, of course, poor people. They were not too smart and very thick-headed, as a lot of unintelligent people are. So it's setting up ingredients for the soup to go bad. Yeah. So now you have people coming over and more and more and more are coming. In the beginning, they make agreements with Indians. Then they break the agreements and then they start pushing Indians off their land and they start burning Indian villages. Uh, If they didn't leave, they would burn them. They captured some as slaves and sent them back to England. Most of them died on the way over, on the sea. They just threw them in the ocean. It was a horrible time. Now it just goes horrible from here. I'm just hitting the main points.
I'm not going to go through every treaty and every agreement and stuff like that. I'm just going to tell you basically what happened. Um, this is true, what I'm saying. Uh, you can research this on the Internet. It is there. So, next, as they're chasing Indians off their lands to steal their property and stuff like that, the next thing that happens is that a harvest is coming. Because, see, they've set up camp now. The British colonists have really set up camp now. And then they started to learn from the pilgrims what to grow and stuff like that. So they started to want more. Because, see, the more crops they grow and send back to England, the sooner they can get out of their indentured servant status. So this fuels them. They say, hey, the only way to get to produce more crops is to get more land. That means we take it from the Indians. So at one of the harvest uh, ceremonies that they were having, these British colonists, they surrounded this village and they killed everybody. They brutally mutilated them. They cut their heads off. They gutted the Indians and just let them lay like that, dying slowly like that. And then they brought the heads and into the center of their colonist town. See, they were having a Thanksgiving festival too. So they brought these, all these Indian heads in and they put them on poles in the ground and they put them in the center of their town. And they had a huge celebration. There's usually a park in the center of the town. So they had all these Indian heads on these poles. And in amongst all of this, all the colonists were sitting there feasting away on their turkey and potatoes and, and vegetables. And, and they were celebrating. They gave thanks to God for this land that they believe God gave to them. You see, the mentality is quite different than the first pilgrims. See, you cannot say all white people are the same, because they're not. And not all Indians are the same either. There's bad Indians too. Even back then there were bad Indians. We were not a perfect people. This is documented. It was a huge festival. Just think, all these families are sitting in the park, eating their Thanksgiving meal, celebrating, thanking God for everything they have. All that time, all around the park, are the heads of Indian people, including Indian babies, on these sticks that they put in the ground, these poles that they put in the ground. That is gruesome. How how can you eat like that? I couldn't. Could you? You have all these poles surrounding you, and they all have the heads of people on them, and yet you're sitting in the middle and celebrating, thanking God? How can anybody do that? The only way that that's possible is to be mad. To be drunk in emotion. To be intoxicated in emotion. Because the brain is not even working. So they feel extreme hatred for the Indians at that time. And of course, it's still the hatred is still there. But this is the beginning of the American Thanksgiving. So I gave you the full account. This is the full account. Now what a lot of Indian radicals like to bitch about is only the American one. And I really don't like that because to me that's dishonoring the natives who were murdered. 
to me, this is totally dishonoring the ancestors, betraying the ancestors, because the ancestors did not live with hatred in their hearts. They lived with peace in their hearts. The ancestors believed that emotions are part of either blessings or learning experiences. That you do not live in the emotion. That's the ancestral belief of most tribes. But today's radical Indians are racists and they have hatred in their hearts. They don't have peace. So they're the same as those colonists who were celebrating the death of these Indians with these Indian heads stuck on these these poles all around the city square, the city center. So if you're a Native American and you're hating white people because of what they did in uh, the first American Thanksgiving, you are only focusing on one part of a bigger picture. You're close-minded and you're thinking the same way as those white people who were celebrating the death of the Indians. You're thinking the same way. You're just like them because you have hatred in your heart. And that's how you are dishonoring the ancestors. Because I'll say it again, the ancestors did not have hatred in their hearts. They had peace in their hearts. The ancestors believed that emotions are just part of either learning experiences or blessings. But that they go. You're not supposed to live in an emotion because if you do then you become blocked then you will not see the fullness of reality and you will never know what love is the only way to know love is to learn from your difficulties and enjoy your blessings the emotions flow through you you receive peace this is love. But if you hang on to anger and hatred in your heart, you're not living like the ancestors. You're living like those colonists who had hatred in their hearts too. You're the same. And as long as you are angry like this, you dishonor the ancestors. This is wisdom. Think about it, if you can. Because most Indian radicals and racists are so full of hatred that they're just as close-minded as the Ku Klux Klan and the Aryan Nations and the Neo-Nazis and all these other white supremacist groups. They're just as close-minded as them. It's really hard to get through to their heads because they have hatred in their hearts. But as long as you have hatred in your heart, you dishonor the ancestors. So a lot of these native racists, they'll call thanksgiving, thanks-taking. See, they're only focusing on that American version. And they're native, but they're focusing on the American version. Why the hell is that? The, that shows you that when you have hatred in your heart, your communication doesn't even make sense. It's stupid. Thanksgiving, I choose to look at the native way. And that way is thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. I give thanks to the sun, to the earth, to the air and to water so that we have food so that we may live with each other we all need this 
regardless of our skin color. This is why the first pilgrims and the Indians got along. Because they have this understanding that everybody needs earth, wind, fire, and water to live. That's why they had that mutual respect in the beginning. So in the beginning, the pilgrims took on the native version of Thanksgiving. But it was when the colonists came from England that's when things fucked up. Because they're coming with duality. More so than the pilgrims had. Pilgrims were dualistic too. But they were more open than the colonists were. So this is the full version of the Thanksgiving story. And like I said, me, I choose to respect my ancestors, all ancestors, even the ones that are from different tribes. I choose to honor them by giving thanks to the earth to the wind, to the water, to the sun, for everything so that we can live. And you gather with your family and anybody who who needs something to eat that day, you bring them in and say, hey, come in, Let's, let's fellowship, let's have a good time. This is a time to be thankful. Don't ever think you have nothing. You have something. We have each other. We have each other. And most importantly, you have yourself. That's just wonderful. You have a body. You have a mind. You have emotion. You have soul. It all connects. And where it connects deep inside of you is your sacred center. We all have this. Not just Indians. We all have this. This is what makes all humans ikje. Old Indians, they say, That's because I'm a human man. Or a common man. That's what that means. It doesn't mean I'm Lakota. It means I'm human. The ancestors never call themselves Lakota. They call themselves Ikje Oyate, common people. That's what they call themselves. Most tribes have a very similar name too. Lakota is recent. That's not ancient. When you're looking at how long we've been here. So this, the native thanksgiving ceremony is thousands and thousands of years old. It honors everything. It honors each other and it honors the self. Because reality begins within. Where that sacred center is inside of you that I described, where your body, mind and heart and soul connect, that is where reality begins. So when you take care of those four parts as best as you can, you're going to communicate in a healthy way. You'll find peace inside of yourself. You'll establish it and you'll nurture it by learning through difficult experiences and enjoying blessings. You know how to handle conflict. You'll know how to face difficulty and learn from it. It's not a bad thing. It's a part of life, but it's a part of life that teaches you something. And that any time you can learn something is a good thing. This is the ancestral way. This is why the the Indians pitied the pilgrims. Because we're all human. A lot of racist Indians, they like to say, they should have killed all those pilgrims when they came. Then that would have stopped the rest of them from coming. That's bullshit. They would have came regardless because they were overpopulating. They were looking for some place. So they would have come no matter what. It doesn't matter. It's happened. And we have to come to peace with it. All of us. We have to come to peace with what happened and grow from it. 
as a nation. Otherwise, we kill ourselves. So all these native racists who are talking about thanks taking, but they're committing a spiritual suicide. They're not doing anything to help the situation, and they're doing everything to dishonor the ancestors. This is not our way. And most of these Indians that talk like this, they can't even speak their own language. Maybe that's why they're acting like that. It's not enough to speak from the heart. You have to speak from the mind. And if you have a language, you should speak from it. You should learn it. Because that's thousands of years old. So this whole stuff that you see, usually Indians are sending around these pictures of thanks taking or or they'll say, now now what's going on is you see a picture of an old Indian and with the words, we've allowed the immigrants in too and look at what happened. Yeah, see, that's their take on the current migrant crisis of today. And that is racist. That is not our way. To talk like that is not our way. One of the most stupid things I heard a Lakota guy say, and he's from my reservation too, he lives in California. He said this. He said, yeah, we have to be ready because when all the white people disappear, we have to be ready to take back all our land. And I was like, that is total racism. This guy is older than me. Shows you that wisdom does not come with age. If all white people were to go and disappear from this earth, we will too. Because we're all connected. They're human. We are too. See how stupid racism makes people talk? And all white people go, then, then you know, that we have to be ready for that. That's not going to happen, folks. If the white people go, we're gone too. Everybody's gone. We're all in the same boat. Or if you want to speak in, in native ways, we're all on the same turtle. <laughs> yeah. So, do you see what I mean? A lot of today's Indians are extremely racist. And, and this nonsense of thanks taking, that's only focusing on that first American Thanksgiving. It doesn't even take into consideration the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years of native thanksgivings. It just totally blocks that out. They don't even want to see that. These native racists, they don't even want to acknowledge the fact that our ancestors celebrated Thanksgiving three times a year for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. They don't want to address that. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to regard it, which means they don't believe it. They only focus on the bad American one. They only focus on that. That's like looking at a big puzzle and just looking at one piece and throwing the rest in the trash and saying, this is a bad piece. God damn this. They throw it on the floor and stomp on it and pee on it and, and shit on it and everything and they keep doing that over and over and over. Meanwhile, maybe there's 999 other pieces that are still out there and they refuse to acknowledge that. Those other 999 pieces represent the thousands and thousands and thousands of years that natives have been celebrating their own Thanksgiving three times a year. So native racists, so stupid. Just as stupid as the Ku Klux Klan. I always try to explain the total picture. Look at the total picture, not just 
the corner. But everything. You have to try to take into account everything. So to only focus and attack the American one is to also attack the Native one. Because the American one comes from the Native one. You see how stupid these Native racists are. So incredible how racism makes people stupid. And this shows you Indians can be just as stupid as racists from other cultures. That shows you there's good Indians and there's bad Indians. Just like there's good white people and bad white people. And people change. Some racists, they finally wake up and they smarten up and they they make amends and they live the rest of their lives as best as they can. But some people fall and they were nice to begin with, but then they become racist. So you see, you can't say that a person is good just because of their skin color because they could change for the better or for the worse. So I don't like it when when Lakota racist, when they use the word washichu as if it was like the N-word when you're talking about black people in a derogatory way. The word washichu is not a derogatory term. It's just talking about white people. And it comes from two words, washin and ichu. Washin is animal fat, the kind that you cook, the put that you put in your soup or, or like bacon. That's washin. And the story is that long time ago, there's two white guys got lost in the prairie, and they were about ready to die. And they they saw some smoke in the, the distance, so they went. To, near to investigate and they saw a Lakota village there and they saw this old lady she was making a soup see we use buffalo stomachs for soup kettles they're quite handy because when you're done you dry it fold it up and put it away (laughs) when you're ready to use it you just fold it out and heat a fire put some hot rocks heated, heated hot rocks and put it inside the kettle and then and then put your buffalo fat in, and then timsila, which is wild turnips, and maybe wild onions, and then throw your buffalo meat in after that if you're going to make buffalo soup or some other kind of soup, papa soup, dried deer meat soup. They didn't know this, so they saw this woman put in the animal fat, as a buffalo fat, and she put it in the soup, and they thought that was meat. They didn't know. <laughs> so, so they went, they snuck over there and they, they got a stick and poked it in and they start running off. She came out, she's going to put in some timsila, yeah, some wild turnips. And she put it in the water and she looked in there and she said, Hey, who took off with my fat? <laughs> so people came running around. They're all looking and said, What's wrong? Some of these stole my fat, she said. And they looked in the distance and these two white guys were really running and they had this animal fat on a stick. Yeah, they're really running. So they started laughing and they, they must have thought they had a piece of meat there. <laughs> That's where the story comes from. Washing is animal fat. Iju means to take. You put the words together and you get washichu. It's a funny story. Now, in our culture, our nation is called Ocheti Shakoni. And in this nation, there are seven main groups. Okay? Four groups speak a dialect called Dakota. Two groups speak a dialect called Nakota. And the seventh group speaks a dialect called Lakota. Okay? Now, within each of these seven groups, it breaks down again. Okay? Now, a lot of these names really have funny stories. For example, Sisi Trois. This is a Dakota group. They speak Dakota dialect. Okay? 
And so there, there's always this funny story where they say, when like if they're going to have a council meeting, and people will go, hey, what's that? She really smells like fish. Ah, those TC Tuma people must be here now, they say. <laughs> it's to tease them, yeah, because they're fishermen. They live in the Great Lakes area. That's where they're from, anciently. The Great Lakes area in Minnesota area also. This was Dakota country. Sisi Tuma is one of the Dakota groups. And they were fishermen. So that's why they would tease them. They must be here now. It really smells like fish. <laughs> you see, the really funny names, like Rosebud people, they're called Sichanghu. There's two reservations they live on today. Rosebud Sioux Reservation and Lower Brule Sioux Reservation. These are Sichanghu Lakota people. Sichanghu means burnt thigh. See, a long time ago, on the Great Plains, for thousands of years, all the tribes had this agreement that every 10 years they're going to burn their territory. See, they learned this through star knowledge. This is a very ancient knowledge, and it has a lot of teachings that are very scientific. And one of them is saying that we have to do this because it adds nutrients to the ground. It puts like a nitrogen into the ground so that wild wheat will continue to grow for the buffalo and other animals. Otherwise, if we didn't do that, it turns into a desert. See what I mean? So we had to do that every 10 years. So during that 10th year, tribes were at peace because they all had the understanding this is what we need to do this year so that the buffalo may live, so that we may live. See how that works? So this one year, this Sichanku group, they're saying, okay, you guys start on that side and we'll start over here and then we'll come around this way and then we'll you know, burn a circle yeah, and then slowly make that circle get smaller because they're burning it. And here, uh, they, so they oh, all right. So they started doing what their their plan was. And here they they bumped into each other in the back. Their backs bumped into each other, and they say, "Hey, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be over there." And the other guy said, "No, you're supposed to be over there." And by that time, it was too late. They burned themselves inside of a circle. Somebody took the wrong turn, yeah? So the, the the only way they could get out was they had to run through the fire. That was the only way. So they all oh, blazed. <laughs> and they came out on the other side. Oof, 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 oof. You know, the, the fires were burnt. So that they like to tease and even the Sichangu people have no sense of direction. <laughs> you see, funny stories. The names come from funny stories. See, humor is a very important part of our culture. So these funny stories are part of that. That it's to extend fellowship to one another. That's what humor is so important. We tease ourselves. And then as we slowly get to know somebody, we tease them. That's showing that we like them. We want to be friends. Then you tease each other. See what I mean? It works like that. That's part of our our custom. So when we have the story for Washichu, Washing Ichu, see again, that's a funny story. The purpose of that story was to extend fellowship to the white people. That was our custom. But today's native racists, they use this story in a negative way. See, they take everything. They even take animal fat. See, they come at it through anger instead of peace. And there's another guy from Rosebud. He said that Washichu means slave takers. No, it doesn't. When you own something, 
you say Yuha. Yuha is not even in the word Wasichu. This is telling me that this Rosebud guy is a racist, and yes, he is a racist. He hates white people. He, he's a musician. He wrote a song called White People Go Home, which is really stupid because his wife is from Austria. She's a white woman. And they have a son. And that means his son is half white too. Do you see how stupid racists are? He has a song called White People Go Home, but his wife is white. And he has a son who's half white. That is stupid. To take is Ichu, but Washin is an animal fat. It's not a slave. That shows me he does not speak Lakota. You see what I mean? When I said earlier that a lot of these racists, they do not speak their own language. And so when they try to use Lakota, they use it in a racist way. So when you hear the word washichu, this is not a derogatory term. Washichu is just as glorious as Sichangu and Itazipcho and Sisitwa and Ogolala Nung Bapha O Ohenu Basyasa Baho Hoju Medivakantwa Wahbekute Wahbetwa all these names are good names. They have funny stories. Because it's about fellowship. That's what Lakota and Dakota and Nakota means. Now let me explain to you the dialects. In Lakota, we have this expression, Wopila. That means thank you. Wopila. Dakota people say Wopi Da. Nakota people, Wopi Na. You hear the difference? Where we use L's, Dakota people use D's. And Nakota people use N's. That's the only difference. Other than that, we speak the same language. So anyway, these are really important things. I cannot stress this enough that when you're going to look at Thanksgiving you should look at where does it come from in other words you take the time to check things out you don't just believe what some radical racist is saying you take the time to really check it out and you'll see that it's a bigger picture and that it comes from thousands and thousands and thousands of years of beautiful native Thanksgiving harvest ceremonies and festivals. That's where it comes from. It has a beautiful foundation. And just because the colonists made an ugly tradition out of it doesn't mean we have to follow that. We can all Make it beautiful again. And that's what I choose to do. Because when we make it beautiful like the ancestors, then we honor the ancestors. We're honoring the earth and the sun and the sky and the water. So all you native races out there who are calling this day thanks taking and you're out protesting, you're not giving thanks to the earth you're not giving thanks to the sun you're not giving thanks to the sky and you're not giving thanks to the water either because you're not being like the ancestors because you have hatred in your heart and you are killing yourself if you really believe in native beliefs there's another one called Waokia And this one means that whatever you send out is going to come back to you four times as strong. So if you're sending out hatred, that's going to come back to you and fuck you up. But see me, I choose to do it the native way. I choose to 
to give thanks to the sun and to the, the earth and the sky and the, the water like the ancestors because we all need this. Because we all bleed red. Red is life. Red is not Indian. Red is life. And we all bleed red regardless of what our skin color is. And I choose this way. Because this way honors everything. And it honors each other and it honors the self. The honor of one is the honor of all. So very basic Lakota belief. When you honor yourself, you honor everybody. You honor yourself by taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Learning from difficulties so that you can enjoy blessings. This is how you honor yourself. And when you live this way, you have peace. And then you can be at peace with those around you. And when difficulty comes, you will find a solution. And you'll learn from it. Everybody will learn from it. So that you can enjoy good times with each other. And that's how you honor all. But first you have to honor yourself. Because reality begins within. Always comes back to that. Reality begins within. This is the way to live. This is the road of life. They call this the red road. Red does not mean Indian. The red road is not the Indian way. No, no, no. Red road is the road to life. Red is blood. Blood is life. Anything that's alive. Flowers. Clouds. Horses. If it's red, you say luta. When it's not alive, like a car or a desk, a chair, if it's not alive, then you say sha. There's two colors for red. The reason why is because things that are alive are sacred. So we use luta for that. Chetan luta, red hawk. Hashunkeluta, his horse is red, or her horse is red. This is all based on Lakota star knowledge, what I said. So this is really what I want people to know, to look at the full picture. When you honor yourself by taking care of yourself, as I described, that means you take the time to check things out. Because you've done it to yourself first then it's a natural thing to do. But if you just believe everything, some guy posts thanks taking on Facebook and it has 10,000 shares and 40,000 likes, that does not mean it's good. It just means there's a lot of Indian racists. You have to take the time to check it out. If you just believe it without question. That means you're not taking the time to check it out. And that means you didn't do that to yourself either. Because if you did, if you did take the time to establish peace in your life, that's the same thing as taking time to check things out in your own life, then naturally you will take the time to check this picture out. To see where is this coming from. Why are they saying this? Is this true or not? So anything out there with thanks taking on it, that's racism. And most Indians today are racist. That's really sad. I'm really sad to see that. They focus too much on the on being Indian and not enough on being human. That's really sad. See, I come from a time when, as a little boy, I heard old men say that they're ikje wichasha, ikje wimachasha. I am a common man. They never said, chimalakota chahecha. They never said that. They never said they were lakota. They said they were ikje, human. 
that closer to the ancestral way of talking. I don't like seeing this native pride, Lakota pride and all that, because that leads to racism. That keeps people away from each other. And if you just choose to be friends with other Indians, you are a racist. Because not all Indians are good. I know that from experience. I know Indians who are bad. I know Indians who are racist. Let me quote you something from a very well-known Native American that anybody who knows anything about Indians in this world probably knows this guy's name. Now, try to, to guess his name as I read a quote from his book. Here's the quote. Golden eagles don't mate with bald eagles. Deer don't mate with antelope. Gray wolves don't mate with red wolves. Just look at domesticated animals, at mongrel dogs and mixed breed horses, and you'll know the great mystery didn't intend them to be that way. We weaken the species and introduce disease by mixing what should be kept separate. Among humans, intermarriage weakens the respect people have for themselves and for their traditions. It undermines clarity of spirit and mind. He's saying that humans should not intermarry, that people of different skin colors should not intermarry. This is what he's saying. He's saying that when people of different skin color marry, and have children, that the children are weakening the species, and these children are bringing disease. This is what he's saying. When I first read this, you know what the first person that came to my mind was? When I first heard these words, I'll be damned, but I thought Adolf Hitler said these words. Really. I honest to goodness thought Adolf Hitler said this. But guess who said it? It's a Lakota man by the name of Russell Means. That shows you not all Indians are smart. This shows you that Indians can be stupid as hell. This is not representative of the ancestral way. This violates the words Ikche Oyate, common people. It violates the concept Mitake Oyasin. We are all related. So let's say Russell Means got in a car wreck and and his liver got punctured and they it, they had to take it out because when the liver is damaged, you can't just sew it up. It's damaged, it's done. So now Russell Means is in the hospital and he's waiting a liver transplant. Somewhere in California, there's a white man and the white man, he died, but his liver is still good. And he has the same blood type as Russell Means. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Here's a big question. Can you think of it? Same blood type. How can that be when Russell Means is Lakota and this other guy is white? Russell Means just said we're different species. How can we be different species if we have the same blood type? So the doctors say, we found a donor. Do you want it? And Russell Means, being the selfish man he was, he says, yes, I want it. Of course, I think anybody would want to live, yeah? So they fly the uh, liver from California to South Dakota, and they put it inside of him, and they keep him in the hospital to see if the body will take it. Now, according to Russell Means' ideology, his body should reject this liver because this liver is coming from a white man. That's Russell Means' ideology. Let's say his body accepts it. 
his body accepts the liver, now he's alive. He has the liver of a white man inside of him. How can that be? Because according to himself, he said people of different skin color are not supposed to mix. But yet he has the liver of a white man inside of him. It does not make sense, does it? See? Russell Means was a racist. Just about everything he said was total shit. A liver is not Indian. A heart is not Lakota. A brain is not Japanese. A brain is a brain. Liver is a liver. A heart is a heart. They have no skin color. They have no race. The language of the body is the same throughout the world. Because all these things can happen. We can we can receive transplants from people who are of different cultures. As long as we have the same blood type, we can receive transplants from others. That shows you we are the same species. And Russell Means is a liar. Uh, he's a racist. And all he did, his greatest feat he wasted his whole life on was dividing the Lakota people against each other. That violates Mitakwe Oyasi, which means we are all related. Now do you understand? This whole American Indian movement violates Lakota star knowledge. It violates Mitakwe Oyasi. This is not a civil rights organization. This is a racist organization. And I do not support it. It does not represent Native people. Most Native people are not members of this group. This group is consisted mostly of troublemakers, drug dealers, criminals that are outcast within the Native community themselves. And none, absolutely none of the American Indian movement people can speak their own language. They all speak only English. This is really important to know. So I don't like it when these American Indian movement racist people do all their Thanksgiving protests because they're only focusing on that American version. And they're totally denying the thousands and thousands of years of Native Thanksgivings. They're totally denying those. They're denying that that even happened. So that means they're going against the ancestors. That is pure stupidity. So this is what I have to say. <laughs> Gee, I went an hour nonstop here. Holy man. See, when I get passionate about something, I stay on it for a long time. So that's why it takes me a really long time to eat. <laughs> that's why I sit on the toilet a really long time. <laughs> Uh, you see, humor. It's very important. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like I said, the way I choose to have this day is the way the ancestors had this day, which is a day of celebration. It's a day to have a good time. Yeah, It's a day to to fellowship one another, feed each other, and be thankful for everything. And never think you're poor. You have your body, yeah? you have your mind, and your 
your emotional self and your spiritual self and you have family and if you don't have family maybe you f- maybe you have friends if you don't have friends don't worry number 1 you have yourself and you have us on this show yeah we are family too we are family too <laughs> But I, I just wanted you to know all this information because it's very important. It shows you the, how racism really gives somebody an ugly feeling. And I really feel sorry for those who are racist and that that's all they talk about is just hating another skin color, making fun of it, and being sarcastic about it. They spend their whole lives all day long doing that and that's sad and that is so so sad to live that way everything that I said tonight is based on the Code of Star Knowledge and I thank you very much for taking time to tune in and listen I really appreciate it and I wish you all a wonderful Thanksgiving and be nice to one another. Yeah, be thankful for everything. Like I said, the earth, wind, fire, sun, water, everything. And for us, there's no goodbye. So we say, until next time, Doksha Ake. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otechike. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo, thank you very much.